Calligraphy, or the written word as art, has ancient roots dating back to 600 B.C. The work of Chinese-American artist Freda Lee McCann is also deeply rooted in history and tradition. She combines her mastery of traditional Chinese brushwork with a more Western style of watercolor painting. The result is works of art that bring to life her worldview as an artist who was born in the United States and grew up in Taiwan. And in her hands, the ancient art of calligraphy has taken on a colorful new meaning. There's not a lot of portraits of people in Chinese painting. Chinese painting is more about the landscape and how, how grand the landscape is. It's, it's been here for a long time. It's going to be here. And how people are so insignificant. They come and go. When I was 12 years old, my father passed away. And my mom found a letter in my father's stuff. It was a recommendation letter to a very famous artist in Taiwan to, for me to study art. And so my mother took the letter to the artist. And he said, I'm sorry, I don't teach children. He was Madame Chiang Kai-shek's teacher. So he was very famous. And so my mom said, well, you know, her father passed away. Uh, why, why don't you make an exception? So I went to class. It was the first time I ever saw a Chinese painting. And I just fell in love with it. He was so happy with my work. And that kind of started my love and passion for landscape painting. I started out being a traditional Chinese artist. Now I think I'm moving away a little bit, but still keeping the classical Chinese uh, tradition. These are uh, Shithao's paintings. Uh, Shithao's one of my most favorite painter of the old masters. Actually, I studied from the original of these paintings. I copied those, um, and I had the pleasure of seeing them in real life. I was interested in looking for my own voice. And since I am so much of an American, I've lived here almost all my life now. But there's still part of me is very Chinese. And I find it emotionally necessary to maintain the, the Chinese part. But I wanted to do something new and I just, had a hard time breaking away from the traditional. But then, because I've been um, exposed to a lot of paintings with layering, and I just find that fascinating. Um, so I was trying to see if I can do that to my Asian paintings. Trying to break the rules, but yet maintain the traditional part of it. So it's kind of marrying the two cultures.
A friend of mine came to visit me and saw that I have all these phone books of calligraphy on the floor. And she asked me, what are those? And I said, that's my, callig my practice calligraphy. And they're, they're garbage. I throw them away after a while. So she said, well, they're beautiful. You shouldn't throw them away. And I said, well, I don't know what to do with them. Then the light bulb went off and say, hmm, what if I put some calligraphy on there as collage? In the Chinese culture, beauty and calligraphy is very important. And to have good handwriting is <laughs> very important. Uh, I guess we started, you know, in grade school having to practice calligraphy. I use some calligraphy because of the meaning and then I use a lot because it's beautiful. Or I'm looking for a character that has lots of strokes for one area and maybe look for more cursive, a simple character for some other area. So I start with tearing up um, my calligraphy. I just then glue this on. And then I use acrylic paint and start to push it into the background. And then might decide I want I want a couple waterfalls, so I, I paint a strip of waterfall, and I want the landscape to kind of go have this movement. And so I'm going to then start to add landscape pieces around, and then I'm going to glue some more calligraphy. And so it's, it's a long process. I extracted a lot of words from poems that written by Mi Fu about friendship. And I guess as I'm getting older, I feel friendship is really, really important. My grandfather's brother, he was a general and a scholar. I knew that he wrote many poems in his lifetime. But recently, my uncle had sent me a collection of his poems that are translated into common Chinese so I can read them. And there's one poem I read that really touched me. This was the war when the Japanese was invading China and his good friend was leaving to go to war. He talked about how here he's saying goodbye to his friend, and he said there's so much to say that they didn't say anything. They just walked in silence. So there was a lot of sadness in both of their hearts. And so when his friend was riding the horse to leave, the horse can feel the master's sadness so the horse actually turned around and looked at my great uncle before they um, rode off. And so it, it really touched me. It was just a beautiful poem. So I wanted people to be able to read it so it's not obscured in my painting. I guess I'd like people to think that I have put the two culture together, the layering of the Western style work, but yet maintain the classical Chinese landscape and integrating the calligraphy into becoming part of it. The traditional 
Chinese painting is that you have a landscape painting and then you have poetry written on, on the side that's not on the mountain itself. Uh, so that's the new element for my work, is to put the calligraphy into my landscape rather than on the side. I don't really know where I'm going next. I would like to keep discovering new directions, but not forgetting where I came from. That's it for this week. Join the conversation with us on social media. We are CCTV America on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. All of tonight's interviews can be found online at cctv-america.com. And let us know what you'd like us to take full frame next. Email us at fullframe at cctv-america.com. Until then, I'm Mike Walter in New York City. We'll see you next time.